Recently, the New York Times published their 10 best books of 2023. So I'm going to go through and discuss all of the titles on this list, some of which have been being discussed a lot, some which haven't been being talked about all that much. And I find this list especially helpful because they give an equal amount of fiction and nonfiction in this. And I'm somebody that primarily reads novels. So I like to get more good nonfiction book recommendations. And I'd love to know what you think about any of these books, if you've read them or if you're keen to read them now. The very first book that they talk about is The Beasting by Paul Murray. And I feel like this novel just narrowly missed out on winning the Booker Prize this year. There was a lot of support and love behind this book. It didn't win a prize in Ireland uh, recently. So, you know, it has gotten an award and it's been making a lot of these best of the year lists. And I think deservedly so, because I loved reading this novel. And I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it because his previous novel, The Mark in the Void, I wasn't so keen on. But this I was completely gripped by and really emotionally involved in the story of this family of four's life, um, following them over a period of time as they're going through a lot of personal struggles, but also larger struggles, um, which might uh, completely destroy their family. Um, they have a lot of secrets. Um, they have a lot of misunderstandings about each other. And so we follow each of their perspectives. And I think it's so masterful how Murray creates their voices, each in a unique and separately convincing way. And uh, so, and there, the story has so many cliffhangers that even though it's quite long, I was gripped all the way throughout it. Chain Gain All-Stars by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya, which is a novel set in a prison where the prisoners have the chance to get their freedom, but they have to participate in gladiatorial battles, which end in death. And it follows two women in particular who are are prisoners uh, who are teammates and lovers and uh, we follow their journeys but we also see this um, through the perspective of audience members um, who are watching these big grand battles being set um, which feel very close to a lot of kind of reality shows um, that uh, are on TV. Now I know somewhat to expect of this novel because I have read his short story collection uh, called Friday Black and I really love the unique voice of that, how he found this balance uh, between humor and horror in depicting um, situations which feel in a way completely absurd but also quite close to reality. So uh, I think it's so unique uh, what he's doing in his fiction and I've been wanting to read this book. Uh, it was listed for the Waterstones Debut Fiction Prize this year and I just got it on audiobook so I'm hoping to listen to that before the end of the year. Eastbound by Melis de Karangal. This is a novel set on the Trans-Siberian Railway about two fugitives uh, who meet each other on this journey and and seeing each other, um, hopefully, an escape uh, from the problems and issues that they're facing in their lives. Uh, it gives me a kind of strangers on a train type uh, feel to it, uh, or maybe throw mama from the train. <laughs> Does anybody remember that movie? I loved that movie when I was younger. But I, I think this this story um, is written in a much more like poetic type way, uh, following these characters' lives and this connection they find in each other. The Fraud by by Zadie Smith, a novel that's been making a lot of these best books of the year lists, which I'm so happy to see because uh, I had the absolute pleasure of interviewing Zadie Smith uh, this past summer about this novel. Uh, we had such an interesting talk about it. And it's a story um, which is about a legal battle in Victorian England, um, which really divided the country. And so many people were talking about, uh, but I feel like it's not all that well known today. Uh, so this this is a case that involved a man that claimed to be an heir to a fortune, uh, or he might have been a fraud. He probably was a fraud, uh, but it follows a character named Eliza, who is watching this case and very interested in it. And uh, because she is an abolitionist, she also becomes very interested in the end 
of slavery in Jamaica and a man who is a former slave um, who is closely connected to this case and becomes a witness for it. And it's about her interactions with him, but also how she lives as a housekeeper for a historical novelist who she also has romantic entanglements with. Uh, so there's a lot going on in this historical novel, but it's all brought together with real vivid detail. There are some great scenes and cracking dialogue that involves Charles Dickens himself as a character. I enjoyed reading it so much and I continued thinking about this book and the resonance and meaning of this story in how we view history, how history is fictionalized in nonfiction, uh, but also in novels and the responsibility of writers in relation to that and readers in sort of checking out facts and really trying to understand the past. Um, I know so many people have said that they've been eager to read this book um, since it's been being listed for all these prizes and since uh, I've been talking about it a lot recently. And yeah, I hope more people read and discover this book. Northwoods by Daniel Mason, a sweeping epic story about a home in New England across centuries and the many different people that have inhabited this house uh, following their different uh, perspectives and trials that they go through in these different historical periods, uh, but also looking at uh, the natural world around them and a uh, lone panther that's um, stalking around this area and a beetle. And so it's looking at cycles of history and nature and literature. It sounds like such a wonderful story and I keep meaning to buy a copy of this book because uh, I think it's a story that I'll really love. And then there are five books of nonfiction, uh, the first of which is The Best of Minds by Jonathan Rosen. And this is an account of his lifelong friendship and professional relationship with a man named Michael Lauder. Uh, and both of them were very promising uh, scholars who had a lot of professional uh, achievement uh, but then uh, Michael Lauder was also a paranoid schizophrenic and uh, this resulted in a paranoid fantasy during which he killed his wife. Um, so he went from the heights of achievement um, to becoming um, this scandalous uh, case which hit the, the tabloids. Um, so he follows um, the, the story of his friend's downfall, which of course is a great tragedy, but um, this is also meant to be a book that contains a lot of humor and tenderness as well, exploring the line between genius and madness. Bottoms Up and the Devil Laughs by Carrie Howley. This is a book which feels difficult to summarize uh, in that it follows the cases of a number of whistleblowers on state secrets, uh, but also it's about the war on terror and internet surveillance in all its forms. Uh, I have some friends who don't post anything personal online because they're so um, worried about this. Um, and sometimes I get slightly um, anxious about it since I post so much about myself online and post plaster my face like all over the internet in these videos and all the book blogging stuff that I, I do. Um, so I'd be really curious to look at this subject matter, um, which explores it in a number of different ways. And if you're wondering where the title of this book comes from, um, it's based on a 2014 meme about a Christian woman who um, is explaining uh, how Monster Energy Drink is a Trojan horse for Satanism. Fireweather, a true story from a Hutter world by John Valiant. This is looking at a case of a wildfire in Canada, which um, took place in 2016, uh, which destroyed the, the hub of the oil industry there and displaced a huge amount of people and caused a lot of destruction and how the author doesn't see this um, as an isolated case, but as a symptom of probably um, thin much more um, cases like this to come uh, by looking at climate science and um, a number of different cases as well. Um, so it sounds like a very urgent story um, about very important subject matter. Master, Slave, Husband, Wife by Ilyon Yu. This is looking at a fast 
fascinating story about a historical case、um, involving a couple named Ellen and William Craft、um, who were enslaved in Virginia in 1848, but who escaped、um, to the free North by posing as a master and slave. And about their tumultuous journey and、um, how, when they finally made it to the North, they became this celebrated couple、um, who escaped. To freedom, but also about the the trials and、uh, difficulty that they experienced after that, and the persecution that they continued to experience. You know, there is some nonfiction that contains such dramatic stories, which sound almost unbelievable that they almost. Feel like novels, but which are actually true. And finally, there is some people need killing by journalist Patricia Evangelista, who over a period of six years investigated the drug wars in the Philippines. And this is a place that she came from, a community that she grew up in, and that she knows very well. And she interviewed、uh, many killers as well as survivors who were involved in、uh, the state-sanctioned deaths of. Thousands of citizens over a long period of time, and、uh, so the title of this book、um, comes from an interview that she did with a vigilante、um, who said,、uh, "I'm really not a bad guy. I'm not all bad." Some people need killing.、Um, so this sounds like a very chilling、um, account about how autocracy、um, can take control of a country and lead to the deaths of、um, so many citizens and normal people.、Um, yeah, a really harrowing story. So those are all of the books on the list. Like I said, I'd like to know、um, if you have read any of these books and if you would recommend them.、Um, recommend if I get to them sooner rather than later.、Um, I'd love to hear about that or other books、um, that you would call the best books of the year. Please let me know about that in the comments below.、Uh, but hope you're doing well and reading good things and gearing up for the end of the year. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye.